Welcome to Change Your POV Podcast. You're listening to Headspace and Timing, a show dedicated to breaking down the stereotypes of veteran mental health. I'm your host, Dwayne France. Let's get ready to make sure that your headspace and timing is set correctly. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Headspace and Timing. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for checking us out. As many of you who serve know, the M2 machine gun, the 50 cal, is one of the greatest weapons in the military's arsenal. If the weapon's headspace and timing isn't set right, however, it's just a huge chunk of metal. Veterans can be rendered inoperable if their headspace and timing is not set correctly either. That's my mission here, to raise awareness about veteran mental health and reduce the stigma against seeking support. Each week we'll talk about different aspects of veteran mental health and interview mental health professionals that are working with veterans, service members, and their families around the country. Hey folks, welcome to episode two of Headspace and Timing. My name is Dwayne France, and I'll be your host. Uh, as uh, as we start to move through the idea of what we're going to be doing with this podcast, uh, these first couple episodes I wanted to dedicate to a little bit more of an understanding about how I view veteran mental health, what I see that uh, that it can be, what it uh, what it can do, and and how it can help veterans. Uh, and uh, if you'd listen to episode one, um, you'll hear uh, some of my thoughts, uh, some of my beliefs about veteran mental health. But one of the most critical um, thoughts that I have is the fact that uh, veteran mental health doesn't mean you're sick. It doesn't mean that you're broken. It doesn't mean that you're damaged. Um, there, are, there are ways to be mentally healthy and mentally well, as, as well as there are ways to, um, to, to kind of... Uh, fix or, or address some of the challenges that we're experiencing. Uh, today I want to give you uh, another uh, point of view that I have about uh, uh, one of my guiding principles, uh, and, uh, and that's talking about the audacity principle. And, uh, and the audacity principle is something that uh, has, has been brought up uh, several times, uh, both in, in the military and in the civilian community, um, in industry, in education, and politics. Uh, so, uh, so I thought that I would uh, just kind of lay some of it out and let you know uh, what I'm thinking about uh, as far as what the audacity principle is and what the audacity principle means. If you're just now starting to listen to uh, the Headspace and Timing show um, as part of the Change Your POV podcast network, uh, I want to thank you for your time. I recognize that your time is valuable uh, and uh, in choosing to spend it with me and learn a little bit more about uh, veteran mental health and wellness uh, is is extremely appreciated. Uh, as well, uh, I wanted to extend my appreciation to, to Eddie and Bennett uh, of the uh, Changer POV podcast network uh, because uh, they definitely believe in the audacity principle um, and that uh, we as former service members, uh, as veterans, um, uh, have a need to understand mental health and wellness, and so they exercise the audacity principle in, uh, in inviting me on the show and, and bring in a, a group of us to, to provide a different set of perspectives on the, um, the, the post-military lives of veterans. Uh, and so uh, if, if you, like I do, appreciate what Eddie and Bennett are doing for veterans, uh, then I recommend you go take a look at their, um, their website at uh, changeyourpov.com and especially head over to the Change Your POV dot com Patreon page uh, to to see how you can support and what benefits you may receive from supporting uh, the Change Your POV podcast network. So if you appreciate the uh, content, if you appreciate the discussions, and please uh, go take a look at the Change Your POV dot com slash Patreon page, uh, and then you can see how you can support uh, the excellent information that's uh, that's coming your way. So as I mentioned before, I wanted to talk about the audacity principle. The audacity principle uh, is something that, uh, that, that I experienced, um, and it's not anything specifically that I came up with, although uh, I have refined it a little bit over the years. Um, I first came across it when I read a book 
uh, called uh, Not a Good Day to Die. And if you haven't read that book, it's probably one of the best uh, accounts of the early um, intervention in the Afghanistan conflict, uh, especially the, um, uh, the interaction between the Special Operations Forces uh, 160th um, and the, uh, the task force guys. Uh, and this is about uh, Operation Anaconda and the, um, and the, the attempt uh, there um, to capture um, <clears throat> bin Laden uh, in, uh, in, in the mountains of uh, eastern Afghanistan. And so uh, uh, while the book is amazing, um, one of the, the key pieces that really attracted me there was, uh, um, I think it was uh, Gary Harrell um, had, uh, had always said that uh, he wanted people to exercise the audacity principle. Um, and, and Gary Harrell had actually gotten it from, uh, uh, from George Patton. <clears throat> and Patton had said uh, that the... Uh, three keys to victory in battle are audacity, audacity, audacity. You know, we have a, a certain, uh, um, I guess, uh, viewpoint of what audacity is, you know, it's, uh, you know, um, that, that it's some kind of uh, cocky or arrogant. But uh, in this instance, it was a little different. So um, in my point of view, the audacity principle very specifically is more often than not, bold and decisive action will bring about a result that is favorable to you unless that action is limited by someone else's authority. Considering that, the fact that bold and decisive action on your part, something that, that you're going to step out and actually do deliberately uh, and confidently, eight times out of ten, nine times out of ten, is going to bring out a uh, a result that's favorable to you. Um, it is going to um, bring you what you want. Um, a lot of people avoid bold and decisive action. A lot of people have a, an idea that, uh, um, well, what if I can't, or what if this fails, or I'm not even going to try because somebody's going to say that I can't do it. Um, and and that's, not, that's not even nearly always the case. And this is definitely in my own uh, personal experience. So um, I wanted to give you some thoughts on, on how uh, the audacity principle uh, exists in a historical concept. Um, of course, uh, in, in the military, um, you, you know, talking about um, the audacity principle of, of, of combat and, and first strike and, and being bold in our action there. Uh, but, but it's not like we're always in combat in, uh, in our daily lives. It doesn't mean that... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to combat. I'm not assaulting an objective uh, on, uh, on, on a, a daily basis. Um, but it, it works uh, in a political perspective. Winston Churchill um, was a firm believer in audacity. And of course, Winston Churchill was a, uh, a wartime leader. Um, but, uh, but Winston Churchill very specifically did say that the first quality that is needed for success is audacity. It's not just limited to warfare and politics, though. Uh, John Dewey, you know, the, the whole Dewey Decimal System guy, uh, he said that every great advance in science has issued from a new audacity of imagination. Uh, the boldness of, um, of, of trying out new ideas. Uh, think about any type of um, uh, technological innovation. Uh, it started with someone saying, I have an idea. How about we try this. That's an audacious, bold, uh, uh, confident uh, stepping out. That's, uh, that's, that's taking a risk. Um, uh, that's, that's being confident in what you think and what you believe and, and stepping out and doing something. We have robots running around on the surface of Mars today because someone somewhere said, you know what? This may not work, but we're going to try it anyway. And that's where the audacity principle is. Uh, the, the thing about uh, the audacity principle is many people try to avoid bold and decisive action because of self-doubt. Um, and, and that does not lend itself to uh, mental health and wellness. Um, uh, the doubts that we allow to creep in, the, the thoughts that, that uh, this won't work or it's not going to happen or... You know, there's no way possible that somebody's going to um, uh, give me a chance. 
The primary aspect of the practical application of audacity principle is confidence. You have to be confident in your delivery. You don't have to be cocky. You don't have to be arrogant. Um, but you have to be confident in uh, what you want, assuming that your action will bring about the desired outcome um, is key, because most of the time it will. Uh, exercising the audacity principles landed me jobs, internships, grants. Um, you know, the, the idea of the cold call, the cold email, stepping out, taking a chance. Um, even this, uh, this podcast uh, came about uh, as a result of the audacity principle. Um, uh, Eddie Lazary uh, reached out to me and said, uh, you know, hey, I have this idea. Uh, he didn't uh, question whether or not I, I would or wouldn't or, or could or couldn't. Um, he was like, you know what, uh, this is what I think and, and this, is, uh, this is what I believe. Uh, my fellow host uh, over at the, uh, the uh, Changing Hearts and Minds show, uh, Jeff Adamek, a firm believer in the audacity principle, um, as he was the first one to step out to uh, Eddie and Bennett and say, hey, you know, what, is, uh, what do you think this might do if uh, we all get together and have different kinds of shows? Um, it, so the audacity principle, that stepping out with confidence, even though the answer may be no, um, and it may even be the ability to take the no, um, the, the challenge of um, overcoming that, uh, that fear of no, um, that's going to be something that's, uh, uh, that's a little difficult. The problem with the audacity principle is uh, knowing how far to take it. Um, and uh, injudicious application of the audacity principle can get you in a lot of trouble. You know, if, uh, if I'm audacious enough to think that uh, if my bold and decisive action uh, is that I'm going to go 95 down the highway, um, my audacity is going to be limited by the authority uh, of the uh, highway patrol. Um, it's going to be limited by uh, what I, what, what's clearly posted that I shouldn't be doing this bold and decisive action. So understanding what those limits are, um, are, are going to be um, key to exercising the audacity principle. Uh, Jean Cocteau had said that uh, tact in audacity is knowing how far you can go without going too far without going up against someone else's authority. Uh, and a lot of times uh, that happens in our, um, in our military life, uh, happened a lot in our military life, uh, happens a lot in our civilian lives, that uh, maybe we might overstep our bounds. Um, then then uh, we, we kind of know what the, uh, the authorities are. You know, I was, uh, as my military career uh, was winding up, I actually had an opportunity to go to North Africa uh, with, uh, with an element of uh, special forces. And, and my job was to supervise the establishment of camp. Uh, There's going to be a base of operations for a multinational training exercise. Um, I was in charge of logistics and support. Uh, my buddy, uh, fellow E7, he was in charge of uh, security and force protection of the camp. Uh, he and I worked directly for, uh, for the, uh, the team leader or the team sergeant, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and he was in charge of the entire camp. Uh, when we first got there, the only thing that was on the ground was a handful of uh, half-constructed buildings, a fence, and a bunch of sand. Within two months, we constructed a fully functioning camp. And uh, through those two months, I was uh, exercising the audacity principle daily. I'm gonna, things are going to go here, things are going to go there, this is what should be done, this is what shouldn't be done. And uh, there were a couple of times that uh, my audacity came up against the camp commander's authority. He was like, um, yeah, no, we're not going to do that, or, or you know, who, uh, who put that over there, who said that's the way this thing is going to be. And, and, uh, and I very clearly said, hey, you know what, it was me. Uh, and, uh, and he met my, uh, my audacity, let's say, my, my uh, confidence with a very clear and definite no. Got it? A, one, you're the boss. B, um, that didn't discourage me because nine out of the ten things that I wanted to get done were done, and I was able to accept the no. You know, you think about uh, leaders throughout history and some of the most respected leaders throughout history. Uh, Stonewall Jackson, um, the, uh, the Civil War general, um, is, is a universally respected figure. Uh, and, uh, and he was intimately familiar of exercising audacity within limits. Someone once said about Stonewall Jackson was that he would act boldly 
in harmony with the intent of his higher level commander. And so that idea of I'm going to be bold, I'm going to be audacious, I'm going to step out, I'm going to do something with confidence while understanding what the limitations of my environment or, or even understanding the limitations of my uh, experiences. Um, that's the key to being able to get things done the way you want to get them done. Uh, the ability to exercise audacity within the limits of authority is what will ensure your success. And so the, the concept of the audacity principle is one that, uh, that I think that, that veterans can take advantage of, um, that we can um, benefit from. Uh, the idea of I can't or I shouldn't or uh, I won't have to, uh, those kind of defeatist thoughts uh, are not helpful. They're not beneficial to, um, to, to us getting what we want done. Um, they are, by very definition, defeatist. Uh, and so in this situation, the mindset that we have, the way that we approach uh, the world, the way that we approach relationships, the way that we approach um, uh, employment, um, all of these different things, um, if we approach them in a, um, in a defeated manner, in a negative manner, then we will be defeated and we will think negatively. Instead, if we exercise the audacity principle, if we exercise the idea that bold and decisive action is going to bring out a favorable result unless that action is limited by something outside of our control, then we will be successful uh, in our post-military lives. Uh, as I work with veterans as a mental health counselor, this is what I try to tell them to do. I said, take, your, take the mindset, mindset of uh, I can't, I shouldn't, I won't, um, the, the limiting, the self-limiting um, concepts that we provide to ourselves. And instead, uh, what would happen if we did? Um, uh, you're working on uh, you're working on a book, right? You know everybody has a story inside of them. Contact the publisher. What's the worst thing that could happen? They're going to tell you no. But even in that no, and for whatever no their reasons are, um, that's uh, now you know a limit. Um, and what did you learn as you were going uh, through that process? What did you what did you understand when you you uh, you you had that uh, that limit uh, imposed upon you? Um, <clears throat> asking for a race, you know, um, asking for uh, more authority in a new position, uh, showing that uh, uh, you can take on a new project. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's different times uh, where I've come in and said, you know what, this is, this is what I'm going to do. Um, uh, not that I'm, I'm asking, but this is what I'm putting forward to a proposal. This is, you know, I'm, uh, I think that uh, this would help us out. I think that this would be better for my clients. I think this would be better for um, our organization. The idea behind the audacity principle is not one that you should uh, be exclusively beneficial to you, of course. You can uh, uh, exercise the audacity principle um, on behalf of your organization. Um, unless, again, of course, there are rules against, uh, you know, you don't want to be audacious enough to... Uh, to jack up the prices without checking with the marketing team or, or things like that. Again, the fact that there are other people that have authority um, over those decisions um, that would limit your bold and decisive action. And, and so the audacity principle is not one to say, you know, how dare you? How, how, how dare you be audacious enough? Uh, or who has given you the, the, um, the authority to, to do this kind of thing? Assume the authority, accept responsibility, and that's one thing that, that veterans have to, um, to be able to bring to their post-military environment is, uh, is, is we do engage in bold and decisive action. Uh, we do um, understand the uh, necessity in taking calculated risks. Um, and, and if we're looking to establish ourselves in our post-military lives as the leaders that we were when we were in the military, uh, then the audacity principle is going to take us uh, much farther than, uh, than anything else we could have done. So that's it, folks. That's the audacity principle. Uh, much of this has been developed uh, in, in my military career, and I've, I've taken it and applied it successfully to my uh, post-military career. 
Uh, I have written uh, about this uh, on my blog at uh, veteranmentalhealth.com. Uh, the the thing that I used to tell my uh, soldiers is uh, audacity is a key to victory in battle. And uh, that's one thing that I picked up uh, from that book, uh, from Gary Harrell, um, that, uh, that that's what he used to say. Um, the, uh, the idea of swift boldness of action was that that is the key to victory. Audacity is the key to victory in battle and in life. And it's a key to finding a, a more peaceful, uh, more stable life. Uh, and, and a life of wellness. Um, so as you can see, I personally don't believe that uh, veteran mental health has to do just with PTSD. Uh, the concepts of post-traumatic growth, the concepts of um, uh, things making us stronger, um, exercising audacity, exercising boldness, exercising confidence in our lives uh, is as key a component in uh, veteran mental health as uh, as trying to to rid ourselves of our weaknesses. So go forward and uh, and do something audacious today. Um, uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, you could uh, you could be starting a business. You could be um, just uh, stepping out and and uh, trying something new. I'd love to hear about it. Um, <clears throat> you can go on over to uh, changeyourpov.com where. Uh, this, uh, this episode will be on the Headspace and Timing show page. And uh, leave a comment. Tell us uh, what you think about the Audacity Principle. I'd love to hear what, uh, what you think the Audacity Principle means to you, how you've exercised it in the past, or maybe how you plan on uh, exercising it in the future. So I'd love to hear from you. Um, you can also uh, uh, reach out at uh, VeteranMentalHealth.com where the uh, show notes will be posted there as well. And, uh, and, and figure out how to implement the audacity principle in your life today. Thank you very much, and I look forward to speaking to you next time.